I went up there and watched him and his welding partner were welding on a 24 inch 500 wall, I believe. So half inch thick, 24 inch pipe, because they were putting the bead and the hot pass in, and then we were coming up behind them to fill and cap it while they went on to another tie-in. He lit up on the top on 500 wall, and he put a hot pass. My biggest piece of advice for hot passing a piece of pipe is to turn it down and slow down. Just because it's called a hot pass does not mean it needs to be blistering hot. The way you learn is by slowing down. It takes time to learn this puddle and react to it and control it, especially with downhill welding. When it's too hot, it's too hard to control. That's one of the neat things that I love about pipeline welding. Any welding in general, but for some reason pipeline welding allows you to to really hone in on your skill set and practice each individual pass over and over and over. And if you believe the same way I do, I believe there's never, never too much room for improvement. In other words, you can always improve something. You can get this bead looking just as pretty as possible, and I guarantee you I could critique it. Anybody you know with more experience than me could critique it it can be better it can always be better there's so many different variables in welding you know you got your welding rod uh, how it's burning you got the weather the wind affects uh, stick welding the type of pipe you're welding on the thickness of pipe the hardness or the there's another word for it but the gap the angle of your bevel um, everything affects everything and you're playing with all these variations or all these variables i mean it took me a while to turn it down and slow down on any pass on, on pipe, but especially on my hot pass. For one, because of my lack of experience, but I thought it had to be really hot to burn out any trash. Like that was just my mindset. I didn't, lack of experience, I didn't know any better. And uh, because you're here, you're learning that quicker than I learned it. And that's what, that's what we're here to do is help you move faster uh, in your welding career. So these tips really helped me over the years of pipelining, so I'm passing them on because I want you to move further faster. I was on a pipeline job in uh, Pennsylvania, I believe, and I watched an older guy. I love, I love watching other people weld, uh, but especially guys that are like 60, you know, 50, 60, 70, because it's amazing to me how much experience is right here with them, right here in their eyes they're connected to this piece of pipe it's amazing to me how much how much they've learned over the years like it's literally i can't even fathom but anyway i went up there and watched him and his welding partner were welding on uh we were filling and capping behind him and his welding partner they're on a 24 inch 500 wall i believe so half inch thick 24 inch pipe two welders one welder over here one welder over there and I walked up there to watch them hot pass it because they were putting the bead and the hot pass in, the first and the second pass in the piece of pipe, and then we were coming up behind them to fill and cap it while they went on to another tie-in to put the first couple passes in. It just made tie-ins go a lot faster that way. I walked up right before they started hot passing, and for one, the bead was ground smooth on his side. So each pass makes a difference for the pass afterwards. So the space on your bead affects how big of cap you have because if you have a bigger space for your bead that means your two bevels here are going to be wider apart so everything it's a chain effect when it comes to welding a bevel everything affects every pass before the next one affects the next one i think that's right anyway so some people grind their beads smooth some people don't grind them at all i've welded with guys that don't grind their beads they brush them off and they start hot passing but anyway he lit up on the top on 500 wall and he put a hot pass in that was as big as my filler. So that just tells you how much slower of travel speed he was going. 
And then it also, and he never blew through, by the way. By doing that, you're taking a chance of blowing through your bead, which happens. It's not, you know, he's, in fact, I probably watched him make another world where he blew through. So it's not, it's not a big deal, but I'm just saying like, like he done it without blowing through and it, it helped us, the guys that were following him and his welding partner, it helped us not have to weld as much. I just wanted to share that because he slowed down his travel speed, but he also turned his machine down a little bit and he was able to put more metal in. Now that takes skill because once you get down here, it's a little different, different techniques and on the bottom it's little techniques. He might've turned it up on the bottom a little bit. I can't remember, but that's my tip for hot passing a piece of pipe is to turn it down and slow down. That speed will come with time. For more helpful resources, check out our website, arosswelding.com. Have an awesome weekend. Stay cool. We'll see you next week. And remember, learn something every day.